I'm about two hours into the hike and I haven't found anything yet, but now I have. Have a look down here. Oh, if I just see it again. I was really lucky to spot this one. It's in the picture now. It's quite a large vertebra. I'm not sure what from yet. Have a look at that. It's a decent vertebra. I'm gonna guess whale because of the age of the area. It's not, it's not dinosaur age. This is Miocene, and I think it's got the epiphyses still on the one side. The vertebra cookie, maybe not. But yeah, that pattern over there is normally kind of from a, a whale so yeah, I'm gonna guess whale but it's just a guess I'm not a hundred percent sure it's a different color to the whale bones I've normally found it's uh, black well quite dark This is where the, the process would have come up. And there and there. So it would have had the three processes, I think. So this would have been the top, so the dorsal process coming up. It has got a concave and a convex side. I'll have to go check if whales have that. Yeah, that's a very, very good find. I'm happy with that. Let me get it stowed away. Here it is after a quick rinse. It's a nice Steinkern for bivalve. So the interior mold of it. Got enough of those, so leave that one for the next person. There's another shell. Another beautiful bivalve in there. That's the hinge where the two halves of the shell meet. Yeah, it's a quite a sizable one that. This is quite an interesting place. This is, I think, a good example of reworked concretions. So there's concretions throughout here, and above it, there's the cliff. So that's the, the Miocene cliff. But these concretions over here, I don't think they formed yet. They've been eroded out somewhere else, and they've kind of been cemented together by this conglomerate here, which makes, which would make dating it quite tricky. You can see there's a very definite line where these concretions kind of meet the cliff or where this new conglomerate material meets the cliff and this will be older because it's below the cliff yeah this I would have no idea how you would date it or what's happened here but something happened to bring all these rounded pebbles here and then we've got a deep water setting above it again. And this is kind of where this underground event happened, this canyon or something. And you can see it's starting over there and then it's coming through. So like an underground debris slide or underwater debris slide. It's not very thick. It's only about two meters, three meters over there. No, probably closer to two, two meters thick. Then narrowing down again. Yeah, real interesting. 
and here we've got the contact between the two so this siltstone cliff has been eroded away by whatever this is these river or beach pebbles probably beach because I see a lot of shell material in there I think we've got a fossil down here Yeah, that's a little lobster. I'm trying to figure out what which way it's oriented, but yeah, I can't quite tell, but there's definitely the segments of the tail over there. I normally find one of these at least when I come down to this beach. Here's a bit of a weird one. That looks like a barnacle over there. And that definitely looks like a barnacle. Another barnacle and a barnacle. That's strange. Barnacles on top of barnacles. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll take that back. It's tiny, it's interesting. Someone might know what it is. What kind of barnacle at least? Is it a deep water? Is it a shallow water? What kind of barnacle is it? So this is a sedimentary area. So we've got um, like a siltstone, mudstone over here. We've got a green sand, the glauconite rich rock over here. But then every now and again I find what I think is basalt, like vesicular basalt. There's vesicles or those bubbles there, so it's a fancy way of saying bubbles. But this basalt with bubbles, I don't know where it's coming from. Because there's no volcanoes in this area, so is it from glaciers or was it like used as ballast on a ship? Because there were some ships around, sailing ships in this area. If you have any theories, let me know in the comments. Just found a what I suspect is a tusk. I think we're looking at a, a pig tusk. <laughs> That's just my guess. It's got an area over here where it's um, been rubbing against its other teeth and I think that's what pigs do. Any hunters out there, let me know. It's definitely hollow. Right next to the, the suspected pig tusk is a, a crab claw, well, a section of a crab claw. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. It'd probably help if I <laughs> put it on camera. But yeah, that's a, definitely a crab claw. Those grey guy crabs have really big claws compared to their body size, so I think it's one of those. Here's that awesome vertebra I found today. Clean it up a little bit. Yeah, that's a great one. And I mentioned the epiphyses when I was down at the beach. So the epiphyses are these end caps and you can see there's a suture line going over there. Let me just zoom in a bit. That zigzaggy line going down there, that's the suture line. 
so that's where the epiphysis connects onto the the centrum of the vertebra you can see it better on this one this is a, a vertebra from the same location and you can see that line over there so this part down here that's the vertebra cookie the epiphyses and all the epiphyses is uh, this area between them that's the grow plate so it's not attached to the vertebra but it allows for the vertebra to grow so the one we've got here is probably from a juvenile whale so it hasn't fused yet so when the whale is fully grown it doesn't need to grow the vertebra anymore so this epiphyses will fuse together with the centrum over there probably the older individual it's fused together nicely over there you can still see the line but the epiphyses is fused together physes means growth in Greek I think and epi is just the end so it's the end part which allows for the growth but don't quote me on that I'm not sure about that Greek thanks so much for joining me everyone on that hunt I hope you enjoyed it uh, it was great finding a nice big vertebra it's always nice finding a chunky piece of bone like that that doesn't need prepping that's even better if you're in New Zealand uh, send me one of these little post bags Put your address on there and put it in another post bag and send it to me and what i'll do is i'll put one of my fossils in there and send it back to you I'm trying to downsize my collection a little bit i don't need so many fossil crabs and crayfish and agates so yeah if you would like one of those just send me one of these bags and i'll send it on to you it's only for new zealand unfortunately i'm keeping the fossils in new zealand especially if you're a teacher or you would like something for one of your classes yeah send me send me one of these envelopes and i'll i'll send you something Stay safe and I'll see you on the next hunt. Mm -hmm.